Hi, I'm Dr. Altman. I'm here at the home of Ron and Nicolette Bonstetter. They're hosting me here in Nebraska, but they're not home right now. Let me show you around. Their home is filled with an amazing collection of original artwork. Some of this stuff is amazing and beautiful. So I was really captivated by the whole atmosphere here. Original art, imaginative and creative ideas. Simply stunning. As it turns out, Almost all of this was created by Nicolette. Just an incredibly talented artist with a, a unique eye. She takes the nostalgic and she adds a, a whole new dimension to it. Really beautiful stuff. This would make great gifts. Beautiful, beautiful things. Let's talk to her and see how she captures the, the interesting contrast of of two-dimensional and three-dimensional art. Hi, I'm Nicolette Bonstetter. And uh, I've been enjoying your art all day. This is amazing stuff. My question is, uh, when you draw, you're painting these different things, you have flat stuff on the same canvas as textured stuff, which I found really fascinating. Or do you mean shaded things? I have flat things and shaded things. Shaded. Text like you're shading to to give it the sensation of being in 3D. Right. So, right. so it's a three-dimensional. Like three-dimensional and First. now in holography three dimension is accomplished by projecting actual wave interference. But you're doing it with color. I do it with color and I'm not really my art I think of as as abstracted. I'm not really f trying to get it shaded to look like the real object. I'm shading it simply for the color, use of the, of the color. So some of the objects are shaded to make them look three-dimensional, but that's not my, it's part of my goal, but not the primary goal. Okay, now how do you get this shading? How does, how does that shading? Um, I, you actually use complementary colors. So on the color wheel, red, yellow, blue, and the colors in between are the secondary colors. All right, so use different shades to get this impression. D different colors. Of Different colors, yeah. Different colors. Um, and so if I wanted to do, uh, had yellow and I wanted to shade it, I would use purple, which is across the color wheel. And so that purple, I need to figure out which shade or tint, meaning add black or white, is the perfect match, but then I make it, blend it to make the shade. So it looks like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and sometimes you use a gray or a black in it. it just depends how the objects looks and how the light's hitting it. You know, you're looking at this di this brooch, and it should have some sparkle to it, but all it is is black and white and gray. And it's how that how the shapes are placed to make that brooch look like it has some depth and sparkle. Where the little the little mice are totally flat, and this is after Disney, um, and that's important to say because these are after Disney images but um, a real easy way for students or for people starting to paint is to use that complementary color across the color. See, I could use that. You could use that. I could figure that out and I could say Anybody I could, could, I could do make that. it look good. <laughs> but, All right, now these bowls, what uh -huh. is the, uh, just a uh, random, is there any kind of uh, thought process that goes into the bowl? Actually, I think about scientific DNA and, and I think about amoebas and I think about little um, diatoms and the little teeny things and the microscopic looking at a microscope. I think about that. Now you've collected all of this uh, nostalgia. You were, uh, does your art fall into that category? You know, I, th that's kind of funny. It's it's talking about a 56 year old woman and her life is what it is, and objects that have made a impact on anyone probably that's born in the 50s. And someone was here at my studio the other day and said they were going to write about my art and said they were going to call it archival art. And I think that maybe that's very interesting, archival art. I think it is archival art. I think that this, there's not ever going to be a time like my growing up time, and those pieces will never be the same to other people in the, that grew up in the 50s and, and to me, those okay. objects. How did you get started? Um, I've always drawn. My dad's a drawer, and my mother writes poetry. And um, 
I remember my mom and dad went out and bought all this expensive easel, and we were not a wealthy family, and all these paints and everything, and I was so excited and so thankful for it. And we came home, and that night I took a pencil and drew probably the best thing I'd ever drawn, the simple pencil, and, and I don't know why that just seemed <laughs> I didn't use any of the expensive things they'd bought, and I drew this beautiful Coke bottle. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I've always drawn and always um, expressed myself with drawing. People don't realize that art is around them all the time. Everything that we do has, you're making a choice, which is aesthetic, usually. And you may not be a good drawer, but maybe you can look at art and enjoy it. And I tell my students that if they want to find a good person to marry, that they need to go to an art museum. And if they can't stand in front of a painting and talk with that person about the painting, this isn't the person you want to spend your life with. Because you have to be with someone that is open to new things, that can talk about things, and invest themselves in something personal like a painting or sculpture.